Girls who have been forced to compete against boys in girls' sports are now fighting back with a lawsuit. The University of Virginia is taking heat for promoting parts of its campus that are reserved only for students of a certain race. And the Democrats and media are in full panic mode over Bernie Sanders. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Friday. I hope you're having a great week. I've been having fun. I've been campaigning. I had my spot on One America News Network. It was awesome. I'll put the link in the description as soon as it's up. But as for politics, there's a lot to cover. There is a lot going on in this country, both cultural, social, and political. We're going to dive into it all. I want to start with the University of Virginia because something has... The left is so twisted, and we see this on college campuses. It's not just at the University of Virginia, but they are completely twisting and perverting the notions of inclusion and tolerance. Remember back before the civil rights movement, we had segregation. Everyone was separated, right? Buses and restaurants and drinking fountains. And everyone thought, that's bad. Segregation is bad. So Martin Luther King comes around, civil rights movement comes around, Everyone is integrated, and at least in my lifetime, race relations were improving, improving, improving. Now, the left has gone out of control, and the whole idea for them of diversity, inclusion, and tolerance is segregation. And now, at the University of Virginia, they have spaces designated, rooms and buildings or or particular areas that are just for people of a certain race or identity, or whatever you want to call it. And there's a video that's gone around of a girl complaining that there was too many white people in this room. Here's a report. The University of Virginia has specified that its new diversity-focused centers are open to everyone after a now viral video showed a black woman complaining about too many white people being in the Multicultural Student Center. The video purportedly shows a black woman delivering a public service announcement to the white people occupying the space. So let's take a look at the video. All right, here is her public service announcement. Public service announcement. Excuse me. If y'all didn't know, this is the MSC. And frankly, there's just too many white people in here. And this is a space for people of color. So this area, as she says, was designated for an area for people of color. This is a university. A university is supposed to, they're trying to bring people together by separating them. And here's more to the video. So just be really cognizant of the space that you're taking up because it does make some of us POCs uncomfortable when we see too many white people in here. It's only been open for four days. And frankly, there's the whole university for a lot of y'all to be at. And there's very few spaces for us. So keep that in mind. Thank you. So let's point out a few things that were said in this thing. First, she says that these white people are making these POCs, people of color, uncomfortable. So at this university, and because of Barack Obama and the left's drive to separate people, we've now gotten to the point where people can't even sit in a room without POC being uncomfortable at the mere presence of folks from a different race. This is where it's come. And this is so much behind my gripes with Barack Obama in his eight years as president. The other thing she says is that they have the whole campus to hang out in and we only have a few areas. Isn't the whole campus open to everyone? Shouldn't it be open to everyone? Aren't the same spaces that they have the same spaces that we have. It's just, it's so frustrating to see this. And like I said, Barack Obama, under his eight years of president, did more to hurt race relations than any president I've ever seen. I remember moving to Texas. The school that I was in, in middle school, 50% minority, black and Hispanic. And folks got along. We just, and it progressed through high school and wherever I went. And now it takes a step back because Barack Obama talks about Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown and all of these other folks 
that just incited racial tension over and over again. Rather than taking his opportunity as the so-called first black president to bring people together, he did everything he could, every opportunity, to separate people. And this is the result. So now because of that backlash, the University of Virginia had to speak out on these multicultural student center areas and issued this statement. And here's more from the Washington Times. The university responded in a statement Wednesday saying the four new and expanded student centers in Newcomb Hall, which include an expanded LGBTQ center, a new Latinx center, are inclusive and open to all students. Earlier this month, the university announced the relocation and expansion of its multicultural student center as part of an effort to offer a variety of spaces that embrace and support the diversity of this institution, the statement said. As UVA President Jim Ryan said at the opening of these centers, I believe deeply that we need to build a community that is not just diverse, but also inclusive. Huh. In order to foster the diversity of experience and ideas that make UVA a great and good place to study and work, these centers are open to all members of the university community, the statement said. So if they're open to all people, aren't they just buildings? Why do we have these special designations in these special areas where people are getting upset because segregation is not being enforced? It's just absolutely outrageous. So from there, I want to segue to another area that just burns me up about the left and their twisted and perverted ideas where they take science and just throw it out the window to advance a narrative, to advance an agenda that is designed to separate people, to separate social structures that actually unite people and instead want to separate so that all that's left is government and their power. And that is this whole transgender movement. And we've seen it manifested in girls and women's sports. And we've seen it over and over again. We've seen it in track. We've seen it in weightlifting. We've seen it in cycling. We've even seen it in boxing and MMA matches where the left tries to pretend that there are no physical differences between men and women, that it's all just a social construct, that it's all just something in our mind that boys and girls, men and women, are exactly the same. We saw this, I've covered it before, these two boys that are, were allowed to race track in Connecticut, winning all these races, leaving the girls that are competing out of medals, out of chances to advance, out of potential scholarships. Well, guess what? They're fighting back, and here's the report. Three fake mile high school athletes in Connecticut, along with their families, filed a federal lawsuit Wednesday to prevent transgender athletes from competing in girls' track and field meets, arguing that biologically male athletes have a physical advantage. Selena Soul, a senior at Glattensbury High School, Chelsea Mitchell, a senior at Canton High School, and Alana Smith, a sophomore at Danbury High School, announced a lawsuit in a press conference on the steps of the state capitol in Hartford, the Washington Post reported. Our dream is not to come in second or third, but to win, fair and square, Mitchell said. All we're asking for is a fair chance. The three are arguing that competing against biologically male athletes has denied them the chance to win medals and achieve scholarship opportunities. So the lawsuit states the obvious, all right? The lawsuit states the differences between men and women and boys and girls that the left doesn't even seem to understand. And here's more from the report. Inescapable biological facts of the human species are not stereotypes, social constructs, or relics of past discrimination, it says. In track and field events that do not use equipment, the physiological differences between males and females after puberty are stark in the record books, the complaint adds. No one doubts that top male and female high school athletes are equally committed to excelling in their sport and training equally hard. Yet boys and men consistently run faster, jump higher and farther than girls and women. All three plaintiffs have competed with and almost always placed behind two transgender sprinters, Terry Miller and Andrea Yearwood. Mitchell finished third in the 2019 state championship in the girls' 55-meter indoor track competition behind Miller and Yearwood. The two Connecticut high school seniors who were born biologically male but identify as female even though they're still male, have won 15 girls' state indoor and outdoor championship races combined since 2017, the lawsuit said. So I hope they make it. 
I hope this lawsuit goes through. I hope it ends the craziness because this whole idea that that we tried to promote through legislation and through restructuring sports in the college and high school level to give women an equal playing field. Now the left comes in and wants to totally turn it upside down and actually deny women the chance to compete and advance in their own sports. It's absolutely outrageous. So next, I want to talk about Bernie Sanders because he is driving the left absolutely crazy, absolutely nuts. They don't know what to do with him. He is the front runner right now. He's got one more votes in the first two elections than any of the other candidates. And now he's leading in the polls and they don't know what to do. The Democrat establishment is going crazy. James Carville, the political strategist for both Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, has come out blasting Bernie Sanders that he's too extreme. Well, so now Bernie Sanders is firing back at James Carville. And here's what he said. James, in all due respect, is a political hack uh, who said very terrible things when he was working for Clinton uh, against Barack Obama. I think he said some of the same things. We are taking on Trump, the Republican establishment, Carvel, and the Democratic establishment. So I always love that expression, with all due respect, because it means, watch out, I'm about to blast you. But I'm going to be doing it in a gentlemanly kind of way. So that was Bernie Sanders, and that's James Carville coming at him. The media is also doing its best to support the Democrat establishment, to try and downplay Bernie Sanders, even refusing to acknowledge that he's the front runner. Check out these clips. You have to say Bernie is a front runner because he's got a much better organization and more money, but Buttigieg actually has more delegates right now. Bernie Sanders won the most votes in Iowa and New Hampshire, but we also know that historically speaking, it's not a very high number of votes for a winning yeah. candidate. The only people that are going out on the limb and calling Bernie Sanders a front runner, they have other reasons to call him front runner. I don't understand how Bernie is considered a front runner. This is a guy that has all... more, you know, <laughs> more people showed up to the polls, highest turnout ever, and his percentage went down that up. So it's just a crack up. These guys, Chuck Todd's actually asking, how can you consider Bernie Sanders the front runner or the alleged front runner, or some people claim he's a front runner, because guess what? He is. You might not like it, but report the news. This is what's going on. It's just so funny. <laughs> he's considered the front runner because he is the front runner, because he's the only one who's winning right now, because he's rising in the polls. People like Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren are fading fast, and we'll see what happens going forward. But it's just absolutely nuts. So that's the media side. Democrats in Washington are also freaking out, thinking that, if Bernie Sanders is the nominee and he loses to Trump, it's not only going to affect the presidency, it's going to affect all the races down ballot and maybe put the House in jeopardy of switching to the Republican side. And here's more from that. Concern and resistance is growing among mainstream and establishment Democrats inside and outside the nation's capital as moderate lawmakers sounded the alarm bells Thursday. It's bad, one freshman Democrat from a swing district said. We are having conversations now how to deal with this. If Sanders is the nominee, we lose, another Democrat told Fox News. Two other vulnerable Democrats said a Sanders nomination would almost certainly cede their states to President Trump and can hurt their down-ballot races for the House and Senate. So that's crazy stuff. So that's a media reaction to Bernie Sanders. That is the Democrat reaction to Bernie Sanders. Well, what's the American people thinking right now? Where are they in all of this? Well, a new Gallup poll came out, and it shows that the American people think that things are pretty darn good right now. And here's a report from CNS News. 61% of Americans believe they are better off today with President Donald Trump than they were at the end of President Barack Obama's presidency, and a newly released Gallup poll shows. Not only are they better off, but 62% credit Trump rather than Obama, and a majority say it's easier to buy things today. 61% feel better than they were three years ago. 62% credit Trump either a great deal or a fair amount for economic improvement. 52% say it's easier to go buy things in stores than it was three years ago. So how do those numbers, this is where President Trump stands right now, how do those numbers compare to say like Bill Clinton's re-election or Barack Obama's re-election year or Judge W. Bush's re-election year? Apples to apples type comparison. Here's the story. 
61% of Americans who say they are better off than they were three years ago is more than 10 percentage points higher than similar results of Gallup polls in 1992, 96, 2004, and 2012 election cycles. The current results from January 16 to 19 Gallup poll echo, echo record highs measured earlier in January, Gallup reports. Americans also give Trump more credit for the improvement in the economy in the past few years than they give former President Barack Obama. While 62% give Trump either a great deal or fair amount of credit, 51% say Obama deserves the credit. So that one's important right there. And that's to keep in mind because the Democrats have nothing to run on. They've spent all this political capital on Mueller investigations and impeachment that they have no issues to run on, no record of accomplishment to compare against the president. So you can bet that what they're going to start doing is trying to say that Trump hasn't done anything, that this is all due to Barack Obama. And that last result from Gallup is very significant because people aren't buying that either. They know that this is the work of President Trump. They are on board with him. And the Democrats, especially with Bernie Sanders at the top, are in big trouble. Folks, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. And we'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. Okay, friends, just a little reminder before you go. And no, this does not count against my 13 minutes. Please hit the subscribe button below and tell your friends. And if you happen to miss our last show, you can check it out right here. And also for great conservative news and commentary, please check out GOPUSA.com. All right, folks, we'll see you on the next show. Have a great day.